All right, welcome to this episode of Photo Theology. I'm your host, Doug, and today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the Nikon D800E versus the Nikon D700. Now, the reason why I'm doing this uh, review here, and it's going to be a resolution based review, is because this is actually going to deal with something that has gone on the night in the Nikon community. And it deals with the idea of upgrading the D700 to a D800E. Is it worth it? Now, mechanically, if you're talking about both of the mechan or both of the cameras, I'm sorry. Um, keep in mind that the D700 is slightly faster on its autofocusing. By slightly faster, I'm talking about a fraction of a percentage. Um, in fact, the stats between the cameras were so close when it came to that kind of stuff, I didn't waste my time actually even posting the stats up for you guys to actually see. Okay, uh, you won't miss, you're really not going to miss a beat. I mean, you're talking about a uh, 0.29 on the, uh, you know, of a second in the uh, D800's realm where it's like a 0.197 in the D700's realm. So just to give you guys an idea there, you know, obviously um, that's not worth really mentioning. Um, in terms of, you know, frames per second, all of the above, uh, neither of these I would consider to be speed demons by today's standards. Okay, when you've got the Sony blasting out like, you know, six frames a second, uh, or, you know, even potentially, depending on what kind of camera you want to talk about, you know, 10 or 12 or even 14 frames a second. Um, so I, we're not really talking about speed here in terms of the mechanics. The one thing, though, you will definitely pick up on with the D800, and I have to stress this, is the video capability. Um, hands down, when it comes to video, the D800E it's going to run the D700 into the ground. It simply just comes out at the time that they were made. Now, keep in mind, when the D700 was made at its time, video was somewhat revolutionary in that realm. Okay, so I do want to give that to the D700. The D700, at the time that its video was made, was actually very acceptable. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. But by today's standards, because, you know, that thing was made, like, back in 2009-ish, um, things have come a long way in terms of video and in terms of technological advancements and you know, so on and so forth. So we have to recognize that when we look at these two cameras. But this is really for the person who has a D700 saying, hey, should I make it an investment in a D800E or should I not? Now, with that being said, I do want to point out um, that I have done other reviews on the D800E in terms of resolution tests. Okay, so you have the Sony, the A99, you have the Fuji, the EX1, you have the uh, Pentex, the K5 II. In no way, shape, or form do we deviate from those reviews. Those reviews are what they are. They're not changing. It is what it is. Now, if you are a Nikon D700 user, I would definitely tell you to go look at those reviews if you're watching this review because you may be surprised. But in the Nikon community, getting back to uh, these two cameras, you have a situation where basically uh, Nikonian, Nikonian users, sorry, Nikonian users are torn between upgrading their cameras and keeping the status quo. The reason for this is because Nikon has changed over in their system with their new imaging processor, with their new you know, Sony 24 megapixel sensor slash 36 megapixel sensor, uh, what have you not. And this really, you know, brings some, brings certain things into play. That's what it does. One thing that has become evident is the color cast has taken a huge hit. And this is one thing where I've never been impressed with Nikon's color cast to begin with. Anybody who says they have a great color cast is completely fooling themselves. Their color cast just sucks. It is probably, arguably, the worst color cast I have seen 
of any camera I can think of in terms of brand right off the top of my head. Samsung whoops them, Panasonic whoops them, Olympus whoops them, uh, Pentex whoops them, you know, Canon, I mean, it, it doesn't make a difference. Everybody's better than Nikon when it comes to color cast, especially when you start talking about purples, reds, and blues, and what have you not, okay? So if you are a Nikonian user, I hate to break it to you, but yeah, your colors suck. Now, moving on to the, the issue that they have within the Nikon community um, that's been voiced is, are these new cameras worth the upgrade versus an older camera if you've invested in it? So when it's all said and done with the D700, you've probably made like a $5,000 investment in it, okay, plus. Okay, so it's like a five grand plus investment. This would be true for the D800 as well. So if you've already dumped, you know, a couple thousand into a camera system, are you getting, in terms of resolution and performance, more out of the camera? If you're talking from a resolution standpoint, I took the same RAW program processed both cameras in a RAW. That is number one that you see here. Number two, I use the same up conversion slash interpolation software that I've used for every other camera. And sadly to say, I'm going to have to go on record and put it like this, the Nikon D700 doesn't hold a candle to the Nikon D800 when it comes to sharpness and resolution and so on and so forth. It, it just doesn't. It's, it, it's its weak point. Um, it's sad, but it's true. I mean, that's just life. However, on the flip side, what you do keep is you keep colors. So, this is something that you have to decide. When you look at a manufacturer and when they shift their technologies and when they shift them in the direction for the sake of, we'll say, noise control, <coughs> sorry, or they shift it in the sake of, you know, resolution, or they shift it in the sake of trying to grab or capitalize on a promotional aspect that brings them more market share. You've always got to consider those things, you know, when you're looking at a manufacturer and how they're producing their stuff. Maybe now is not the time to invest in another Nikon camera, but if you want high resolution shots, well, it definitely is if you have a ton of Nikon gear. I had a guy who was talking to me um, a little while ago, and he was talking about his Nikon D700, and he was talking about how because it's full frame and this, that, and the other, that you know when you go to print, it automatically is going to be better than a Nikon D200 or you know just you know a point and shoot, uh, so on and so forth, or just a lesser camera in terms of you know being non full frame. And, and so on the like. Now the first thing is this, is that the Nikon D200 is not that great of a camera. It never was that great of a camera. It, it you know, even at the time that it was made, clearly, for example, like the, uh, the Fuji, um, their S Pro series just blew it out the water. You're talking about image quality and all that stuff. Um, second point, this is what happens with the, the advancements in technology with the digital cameras. You know, the Nikon D800E has taken quite a few hits here in terms of reviews. But just because you have a full frame unit and just because it has a better coloring system or a slightly better coloring system, depending on how you want to look at it, and just because you dumped a couple thousand into it doesn't mean that when you talk about something, you know, four years out or five years out or 10 years out or however long it's going to be out, it doesn't mean that it holds up the same way in the current day and age in terms of camera performance and how the market looks at it. So I would say that the Nikon D700 definitely does better on exposure control. I give it that. And I would say it definitely does better on its color palette or it's coloring just in general. Those are its two main things I'm gonna give it. However, undeniably, the resolution aspect, which is the key thing here,
because you can't take a Nikon D700 and make it as sharp as a Nikon D800E. When it comes to the resolution aspect, that's where everything changes, and that's what you have to decide. Now, there are other camera systems you can go with, and that's the key thing also, is that when you look at the manufacturer that you've invested in, and when you look at where they're going, you should always be looking at other manufacturers and where they're going. Because as a Pentexian, or as a guy who uses Fuji, or as a guy who uses Sony, which ironically I use all three, <coughs> I don't have a problem when it comes to competing with a Nikon, you know, a uh, D800E. I don't have a problem with it. I already know what I can pick out in my assortment or I can invest in within the brands that I prefer that can match that. If I'm going after resolution or if I'm going after noise control or if I'm going after the actual color palette itself or if I'm going after dynamic range. I don't necessarily have to give up something to gain something. This is why it's so crucial to understand the history of the manufacturer. It's so crucial to understand how they prefer to market their intentions, so on and so forth. Nikon is going in a direction where basically from the D5200 going forward and the D7100 I'm assuming is going to be the same way and we're going to test it when it comes out. They're basically going with their more advanced imaging processor system. Unfortunately though, it doesn't play as kind to the color palette to the hues and the saturations and, you know, what have you not, um, and the tones, as it has in the past. And you can clearly look at this just by doing the comparison between a D700 and a D800E. Now, honestly, if you're asking me, okay, well, we know how you feel about this between the two cameras, which one would you choose? If it were me looking at this, I would honestly go with the D800E. Uh, this is oddly a situation where I would eat the color palette and say, okay, I can figure this out with, you know, like DxO or, you know, Adobe or whatever, and I would go that route. Now, if you are a person who does not believe in, you know, um, shooting in RAW, post-processing, then, and I'm talking on a computer here. Uh, then this is what you need to do. If you're looking at this and you're like, oh my God, what's happened to me, okay, in, in, my, in my camera, what's going down here? You either look at getting a brand like Pentex where you can, you know, post-process right inside the camera so you don't have to touch Adobe. You can either look at getting Fuji, okay, where their auto intelligence just literally trumps everybody else's and, you know, their color palette is excellent, dynamics range is excellent. Or I want to say, eh, you could look at doing Sony uh, for what they offer, they're okay, um, but that's if you're concerned about, you know, the ISOs and the, um, no, well, not the Sony. If you're concerned about the ISOs, I wouldn't be going Sony. Um, but that's if you're concerned about, I want to say, uh, you know, the color palette, the ISOs, and, you know, so on and so forth. If you're concerned about a lot of the things that I've been talking about, and, um, you know, of course, you're looking at this and saying, okay, I've got a D700, where can I go? How am I going to sit up here and stay relevant in the market with higher resolution shots when, you know, when other people that are buying the replacement for my camera today or a companion to my camera of, you know, of yesterday, um, where do I go? And this is where you would have to go. You would have to look outside Nikon if you do not want to invest in AD800 and if you want to have those higher resolution shots. High resolution shots are here to stay. They're not going anywhere. So you'll notice I've done quite a few high res you know, tests. And honestly, what makes and breaks point and shoots versus SLRs at this point in time is the high resolution nature. So to give you guys a, you know, a brief you know, concept here, okay? You take 16 megapixels on a point and shoot. Take 16 megapixels on an SLR. The sensor difference between them is more than that of 16 times greater light intake. 
if you're talking in terms of coverage areas, so on and so forth, when you're comparing an SLR to a point and shoot. Now that's with a compact sensor. All right, you're talking about 16 times greater light intake with the same number of megapixels. When you talk about a full frame, well, we're even talking greater than that, which here we're looking at, you know, obviously full frame setup. Your market is driven towards higher megapixels and stuff like that. That part doesn't change. And in staying relevant to that part of the market, there comes a point where you have to say, okay, all right, well, I know, <clears throat> I know that, you know, everyone's shooting at, you know, like this 24 megapixel, that's the big kick now. Well, where am I going to be in that? You know, with my 12 megapixel unit, what happens if I interpolate my image? How is that going to play out? How is that going to allow me to compete against, you know, other, you know, other photographers in the same field or against just other gear in general. It's not so much the photographer as sometimes it is their gear that you're, you know, that you're going up against. <clears throat> this is the kind of thing that you have to keep in mind when you look at the relevancy of your camera. You can have spent a thousand plus into a camera, put it into a, a camera system, all right? You can spend a thousand plus for all the add-ons to the camera. But in the end, if the technology passes it by, ends up passing it by, you have to look at where do you go next? Do you part ways with this camera and its manufacturer? Or is there something to hold on to? In this case, I would tell you that you have a little bit that you can hold on to if you're looking at dynamic range and if you're looking at the color palette. Those are the two main things that I would say a D700 user has going for them. But if I'm looking at the resolution, if I'm looking at how the noise plays out in terms of the resolution, and what have you not, honestly, I'm going to go with the D800E all the way on this. That's what I would do. Because hands down, it makes a huge difference when you're talking about that level of softness that you have there. Especially when you have non-full frame SLRs that if you interpolate their image you would completely obliterate the D700 anyways. I mean that's that's the thing about it <laughs> is that you can get you know uh, you know SLR compact sensors that literally can just cut right through a D800 at this point in time. You know at literally the fraction of the cost of a D800. So like you take the Pentax you know K52 that thing runs like 1100 for the, you know, for the, for the camera. How much does that D700 run? You know, 28, 3 grand, depending on how you're buying it, or 2700? We'll say between 2700 and 3 grand. And the D800E, we already know it's like 3 grand to 3300. And we're not counting lenses in that either. So, you know, like I said, it, it just, it depends. I mean, you guys have to make that decision yourselves. You know, and different people will come to different conclusions. There will be certain people who will sit up here and say, hey, you know what? I don't care what the results are. Nikon is the best brand out there. Yada, 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 yada. And they can believe that if they want to. Um, there are just no facts to back it up. On the flip side of that, if you are a person who tries to invest in a different brand um, due to their technology and, and stuff like that, you on the flip side have to look at their limitations too. So it may be a thing of, I wanna invest in a certain brand when it comes to resolution and stuff like that, but I don't see a roadmap with this specific, okay, and I say specific, manufacturer that leads me to believe that they're gonna produce any higher end cameras past this point. So that's something else you have to you know, take into consideration. If you're a person who really, truly believes that you want to have a camera that goes past the point of what you're willing to invest in with these types of cameras that we're looking at here in this review, then obviously that's something you have to heavily consider on the manufacturer you choose to go with. But just because a manufacturer is willing to build a camera to this caliber in terms of resources, 
it doesn't mean that the output, which is the key thing here, the output in terms of the resources that were put into the camera equal out. So uh, with that said, you guys take care, and I'll talk to you later. All right, bye-bye.